baptism we were claimed in a very special way <clears throat> by a heavenly God and because of our being his adopted children we have special grace and dignity in our life so we claim that dignity and grace again as we sign ourselves as witnesses and followers of God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We gather as baptized sinners, always in need of mercy. So in the presence of a gracious God whose character and purpose it is to be merciful, let us be humble, and confess our sinfulness, and allow God to perform a spiritual heart transplant on us through the confession of our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, when Christ had been baptized in the Jordan River, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, you solemnly declared him to be your beloved son. Grant that we, your children, adopted by you, 
reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may live and speak and behave in ways that are well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street, a bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench, until he establishes justice on earth. The coastlands will wait for his teaching. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement, and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to and unafraid my strength and my courage is the Lord and he has been my Savior with joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation you will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds, proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation. O city of Zion, for great is your midst, in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality, 
Rather, in every nation who fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. What has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. The word of the Lord. approaching him and said behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world Alleluia 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 The Lord be with you and with your spirit A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist. Coming out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit in the form of a dove descending upon him. And then a voice came down from the heavens, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Fifty-one years ago when I was still in the seminary, A homiletics professor said to us one day in class, there will be occasions when you should remember three things before you start to preach. Be brief, be bright, and be gone. This is one of those days when the inside of the church is as cold as the outside of the church. So let's see if I can do this in about three minutes. And that gives you permission after this Sunday to remind me and say, Father Mass, on the baptism of Jesus, you gave a three-minute homily. Could you do that again? Okay, ready, set, go. Thomas Merton, the famous Trappist monk, spiritual writer from Our Lady of Gethsemane Abbey in Kentucky, once wrote, if you want me to identify myself, ask me not where I live. Ask me not how much money I make. Ask me not what kind of car I drive, where I eat. Ask me not what I am living for. Rather, ask me what I am living for. 
It's a terrifyingly intimate question because it forces me to articulate my deepest values. And to get to those deep values, I must be go below the surface of a frail and messy life sometimes, where I conflict with the cultural values. And when I am in that place, I must admit that I am living for something. I reveal that I long for more than who I am now, at this moment. Living for something wider and larger than myself says that I am constantly evolving. So my values and priorities and attitudes and habits at 10 evolved into different values and priorities and adult habits when I turned 20. And then they evolved again when I turned 30. And then in 10 more years, as I'm evolving into the person God continues to convert me to be, I evolve again. And through all these stages of evolving, a voice inside me reminds me, Paul, God isn't finished with you yet. So give up your values and priorities and habits at 40 so that I can walk with you and change you into who I desire you to be at 50. This is the grace of baptism, that on the day of baptism, we begin a process of ongoing conversion of life, and at all the different stages, we seek new pieces to the question, what am I living for? Because in those conversion experiences, God helps me to discover a little bit about myself inside that helps to reveal new answers to that question. So baptism is much more than an event. It is a process of ongoing change. And it's also growing into an awareness that this voice that was poured into me at baptism, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, gets played out through the different stages of infancy, childhood, adolescence, adulthood, senior citizenship. If I am the same person at 75, when I was baptized at two months, then something has gone terribly wrong. It is called cheap grace. When I have replaced it with the voice of the culture telling me this is what you should believe, this is who you should follow, these are the principles that will make you great. But really, the fruit of baptism means that we become witnesses at different stages of life. So Thomas Merton's question, terrifyingly intimate, what am I living for, points to the fact that through all the different stages of growth and development, I discover new things about Jesus Christ and my passion to have a love affair with him grows spiritually as I grow chronologically. Isaiah was used by God to speak an oracle to the chosen people that your next leader will not be a king with a mighty military army like David who will conquer nations but will simply be a gentle voice among you, a shepherd. That voice got inside Peter, who denied Christ three times, 
and then preached a wonderful sermon of conversion in the house of the Gentile Cornelius and brought him to faith in Jesus dead and risen. This is the converted Peter, probably at 35, 40 years old, who let that conversion experience give evidence that it worked in the way he welcomed Cornelius and his Gentile household into the new community of Christian faith. And finally, Jesus, before his public ministry, opened his life to this new spirit and this new voice to put a face on this shepherd king, wonder counselor, prince of peace. So in three years, Jesus himself grew into his own identity as a divine savior for human sinners. That's our journey, to continue to empty ourselves of our old selves and claim the grace of our baptism so that God can continue to change us and use us as a continuation of the witnesses of the New Testament that indeed our baptism took root and is leaving a trail of light and hope behind for others. About six minutes. Let us pray. Trusting in God who sent his own son to be our savior. The son who began a love affair with sinful humanity because that was his mission. Let us offer our prayers this day that we continue our love affair with Jesus by being other-centered for people whose needs are greater than our own. For the church, may Christ continue to bless her with all she needs to continue to spread a message of love, mercy, forgiveness, peace to a broken and fractured world, we pray. That all those initiated by baptism into a love affair relationship with Jesus Christ may use that inner voice to discern and live out the vocation to be a witness to Jesus for heaven's sake, we pray to the Lord. For women facing challenging pregnancies, for the sick who are dying in hospitals and nursing homes and ambulances and parking lots, may God look graciously upon them as they suffer through this pandemic and grant them strength and hope and a community who are supporting them with prayers, we pray to the Lord. For anyone preparing for baptism, the beginning of a love affair with Jesus Christ, may the Lord continue to deepen their faith as they grow chronologically and spiritually in their knowledge and love of the Lord, we pray. For our beloved dead, as they died in Christ on the day of baptism, especially Sean Hammer, who was especially remembered at this mass, they all the beloved dead, especially our fellow citizens who died during the night of COVID, rejoice and live with him forever in their new life of eternity, we pray to the Lord. For our own personal needs and intentions of this day. Loving God, we turn to you in ways that we do not turn to others because their voices are not always so life-giving and freeing and merciful as yours. As we grow chronologically, help us to grow into new ways of being your witnesses and voices of hope and healing to others. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through the goodness we have received in Spirit and children of Almighty God, pray with me that our sacrifice here present may be found acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May we accept sacrifice of Jesus. <clears throat> o God, whose only begotten Son has appeared in flesh, accept the offerings we have brought from our wheat fields and vineyards to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that this offering of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassionate life to fulfill his mission of washing away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, almighty and eternal Father. For in the waters of the Jordan River, you reveal with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your saving word made flesh now dwelling among us and by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove we might know that christ your servant has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to proclaim good news to the poor and so with the powers of heaven and joining our voices with all the heavenly company, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, who has been poured out upon us all. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, with all the clergy, evangelists, catechists, missionaries, and all who give witness to being an adopted child of Almighty God. Remember also our sisters and brothers, especially Stephen, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, sinners one and all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with Dennis and all saints and prophets and martyrs who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for it ever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, for it is always stalking us. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from the voices that lead us to sadness and distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith we renew here as your church, and grant her peace and unity according to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold. The Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have nourished us with these sacred gifts, the real presence of your Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. As we begin a new week of walking the spiritual path, we humbly entreat your mercy that getting better at attuning uh, the inner ear of our heart to listen to your only begotten Son's voice, we may be your children in name and in action through Christ our Lord. After Mass, you're invited to uh, come up and help yourself to a red poinsettia. The white ones are reserved for further use in our church. And when the church is open, hopefully somewhere after Easter, bring a little container with you and fill it with holy water and then feed the poinsettias with holy water. Because that's the secret to keep them going until next Christmas. Okay? The Lord be with you. 
And may God go with us as a blessing for others so that we may claim the fullness of the blessing of the real presence dwelling in us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name.